Apostrophe CMS Onboarding Series, Pages, Part 1, Schemas and Templates. In an apostrophe project, pages provide a way to show static content as well as dynamic content delivered both by widgets and pieces. The at apostrophe CMS page type module allows for the creation of page types. The selection of these page types by a user tells apostrophe what template to use to render the page, what content types can be added to a page by an editor through the field schema, as well as what additional dynamic content should be added. You can have as many or as few page types as you need for your site. If you've watched the other videos in the series, you have likely either created your own project from scratch or you are electing to follow along by switching between branches of our GitHub repository. If you're doing the latter, the code changes made in this tutorial are located in the branch sec2-2-pages. You can look at the readme file of the repository to learn more about how to use it to follow along with this series. If you are just starting this series with this video, you can make a project from scratch to follow along using the CLI tool and the command apos create along with the name of your project. To learn more about the CLI tool, I recommend you watch the code organization video of this tutorial series. The A3 Essentials Starter Kit already has a homepage module that we will modify for our purposes, but creating a new page from scratch is easy. It is essentially a three-step process. First, you create a folder in the modules folder. This folder is conventionally given a suffix of dash page. Within that folder, you need to add an index.js file and another folder named views with a page.html file. Focusing on the modules slash default page slash index.js file, like most page types except for the home page, your new page type module will extend the core at apostrophe CMS page type module. It only has a single option, label. There are additional options that we could add and you can read about those in the documentation. The second step is you need to register your new module in the app.js file. This will be true for any new project modules that you create. Third, you need to register that page so that it is available for the editor to select. This is accomplished by adding it to the types array of the at apostrophe CMS page module. In the starter kit, there are two pages that are registered in the types array of the module options. For each page type, there is an object that has a name property set to the name of the module that should be used for that page type. Note the name structure. The home page module is located inside the modules slash at apostrophe CMS folder, so that needs to be prefixed before the name. While the default page is in the top level modules folder, so it doesn't need a prefix. The second property is the label that will be shown in the drop down menu in the new page creation modal. Let's dig into modifying the home page of our project, but first we will briefly review a key component of apostrophe, the content field schema. The content field schema is simply a collection of fields for the input of content. For pages, the field object takes an add property composed of all the input fields and a group property that organizes those fields. The add key takes an object of named objects. The name of each object is used for the retrieval of content added by the user in the template or from other fields. Within each object, you need at minimum a label that is displayed to the user and a type that specifies what type of content is being added to the field. And this also provides validation and sanitization of the input. There are 23 basic field types available, all with additional options that modify or restrict the content that can be added. As we will touch on in a later tutorial, you can also create custom input fields for specialized content. In the example shown, we're adding two field types. The first is a field type of string within an object named author name. This object has another optional property, required, set to true. This will force the user to add a string to this field before it is valid and can be saved. The second field, body, has a field type of area. This is a special type that can be used to add widgets to the page. As is covered in our documentation and in the code organization tutorial, a widget is a section of structured content. Apostrophe comes with four core widgets for adding rich text, images, video, and raw HTML. As we will cover, you can also make your own custom widgets. Each area can contain as many types of widgets as you wish. In the shown example, the area has a single widget, the core 
add apostrophe CMS rich text widget. It is added to the area by passing the name of the widget as a property key and an empty configuration object as value. Note that the names of the core widgets are prefixed with the at apostrophe CMS, and you can leave off the widget suffix since all the items added to an area should be widgets. While at a minimum, you can add an empty configuration object when adding a widget to an area, depending on the widget, that object can take a number of different properties. As we will see, the rich text widget can take properties that customize what styling and content can be added to the rich text editor. All of the core widgets can also take the class name property that takes a string to be added as a class to the wrapper around any content added to the page with that widget. Looking at the final project, the main area of the home page is split into a top featured section and a bottom latest section. So we will start by creating one area that will take the content from the user for the top section and a separate one for the bottom section. Open the modules slash add apostrophe CMS slash homepage slash index.js file. Start by deleting the main field from the add object. I'm going to replace it with some code that I've copied from the written tutorial, but I'll walk you through the code so you can add it yourself. Right now, bringing the project up would result in an error because we haven't modified our template. However, this screenshot gives a preview of what our new top area will look like. Basically, we're creating a menu that will allow for a selection of any of these widgets when a content editor is adding to the top area of our homepage. Walking through the code, we're naming the first section object top area and adding a single field of type area. That field is getting a label of top area. Then within the options, we are passing the widgets object with all four core widgets. This will create an area where we can add additional widgets by selecting them from the drop down menu either on the page or in the editor modal. In this case, we're also passing some in context options to several of the widgets. The first widget, add apostrophe CMS slash image, will allow the user to add as many images as they want to the top area. Within the configuration object, we're adding the class name property. This will cause the value string to be added to the class attribute of the wrapper element for each image. This property can be used with any of the core widgets. Remember, for this project, we're using the Bootstrap framework, so these classes provide styling from that framework. You can add any classes you would like, but the styling for them either needs to come from a framework, a custom style sheet, or from styles added to your template. We will cover this further in the Adding Assets tutorial. The image widget can also take several other parameters that control the sizes and aspect ratios of the images. You can review these in the documentation. In this way, you can make sure that a user added image doesn't cause layout issues. The next two widgets to add videos hosted by a third party and raw HTML are added without additional configuration. While the add apostrophe CMS slash HTML widget allows the user a lot of freedom to add code to the page, it also has the drawback that malformed code can break page rendering. Therefore, it should always be used carefully, and you might want to try and implement other ways of allowing the user to add their specialized content to the page. Again, we will cover the creation of a customized widget as well as pieces and async components as alternative methods. Luckily, Apostrophe provides a way to still access a page with malformed code. Appending safe-mode equals one to your page URL as a query parameter will allow you to bypass the HTML widget output and fix your page. The final widget is the add apostrophe CMS slash rich text widget. In this case, we are adding a large amount of configuration. The first property, toolbar, takes an array of all the items that you want added to the toolbar that appears when you highlight some text. The first item is the styles dropdown that adds the items passed in through the styles property array. If you supply a toolbar array in the area configuration, it overrides the default values. You can read about the other possible toolbar items in the documentation. The styles array is used to indicate what types of HTML tags can be added to the text in the rich text input box. The only tags that will be allowed are those passed in through the styles array. By default, the style array is set to pass the P, H2, H3, and H4 tags. If you add a styles array to the widget configuration for the area, it overwrites the de default values. In addition to adding the tag through the tag property, 
Each object in the styles array should also have a label that is displayed in the drop-down menu. Finally, you can optionally pass a string of classes. Note that you can have the same tag used multiple times with different class strings. This is exactly what we're doing with the H2 tag. Depending on what items are added to the toolbar and styles array, different markdown shortcuts will be automatically enabled. For example, if the H2 tag is allowed, you can type hash hash in the editor to add that styling to the text you type afterwards. You can read more about this in the documentation. The final configuration option for the rich text widget is the insert array. This creates an additional method for adding items without having to highlight any text first by making the pop-up appear by typing forward slash. There is currently built-in support for adding a table, an inline image, or a horizontal rule. There is also an add-on extension that enables the AI-assisted addition of text in the editor. We will cover installing and using extensions in the Adding Extensions tutorial. Next, we're going to add the code for the bottom area. Again, I'm going to paste in the code from the written tutorial and then give you a brief overview of what has been added. The code for the bottom section is largely the same as the top section. However, instead of the widgets being a top level option, it is now moved inside the groups option. Additionally, the expanded true option has been added. Together, these cause the widgets to be presented as a graphical selection in a flyout menu. Looking at the groups option, it takes an object of named objects. In this case, we are only passing a single object named core. Within this object, we're passing a label for that group of widgets that will be displayed above their cards in the flyout. The widgets property is configured the same as it was for the top section. The only other property in the core object is columns. This takes an integer from 1 to 4 with a default of 3. That This determines how many cards there should be in each row in the group. The cards display either an icon or a preview image that is configured within the widget itself. This screenshot shows how this will look like in our final project, with two columns to display our four core widgets. The last thing that we need to alter on our custom homepage for now is the groups property. This code should be added after the add property within the fields object. The group property takes an object of named objects. Each of these named objects will create a tab in the editor modal. By default, Apostrophe creates two tabs in the editor modal. The first is a Basics tab that contains the title field. You can choose to move that field into a new group to no longer have a Basics tab. The second is named Utility, and it is always visible along the right side of the modal. You can add additional fields in this tab, or you can elect to move the slug and type fields in this tab to other tabs. With the group object, we are moving our two areas into the Basics tab along with the default title field. At this point, if we were to try spinning up our site, we would get a 500 error. This is because our template file expects the main field that we deleted. So we need to replace our code within the modules slash apostrophe add apostrophe CMS slash homepage slash views slash page dot HTML file to output our new areas. Before we do this, let's take a look at some features we can use in our templates. As we covered in the technical overview page in the guide, Apostrophe uses the Nunchucks templating language, which mixes HTML markup with a variety of different features. One feature that is used in most page type templates for an Apostrophe project is template inheritance. This allows one template to extend another, much like most modules in Apostrophe extend a parent module. In the Starter Kit project, templates at the project level typically extend the views slash layout.html file. If you were to open the views slash layout.html file, you would see that it extends another core file of apostrophe, outer layout, that comes from the at apostrophe CMS slash template module. That file in turn extends the outer layout base.html file. Let's open that latter file. This file is a bit complicated, but largely repetitive once you understand the structure. The file creates a standard web page, but adds block directives to areas of the page where you can inject custom values from your project level templates. 
For example, the top line adds an HTML tag with the default language set to EN. But the value of the lang attribute is surrounded by block locale and end block. These tags mean that in our project level template, we can set the page language by passing a different value in through these same block tags. Looking through this file, we can see that there are multiple areas of the page where we can add or change content like the extra head block at the end of the page head tag and the main block within the body tag. Sometimes we don't want to eliminate code that may already exist in a parent template block. For example, looking at the standard head block code, the meta tag in this block has reasonable attributes that we may want to keep, but we may want to add additional meta tags. In this case, we can tell our project level template to keep any content that is already in the block and simply append the new markup that we pass it using the super render tag. The current contents of the block will be added wherever in your template block you use this renderer. So you could put new content before or after the parent template content. Now that our scheme is done, let's create a basic template that simply displays the two areas that we added. In most cases, a page type module requires a template for rendering when there is a request for the page. It will look for a page.html file in the module views folder. The only exception to that rule is if the module extends a page type for which there is already a template. To add our new homepage template, open the modules slash at apostrophe CMS slash homepage slash views slash page.html file and delete all of the content. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and copy the code from the tutorial and paste it in. This template extends the views slash layout.html file and replaces the content of the main block. All the other blocks in the layout are left untouched. The majority of the content here just sets up sections and adds bootstrap styling. The only other lines of special note in this file are the two that render the widgets that were added into each area by our content field schema. The area data.page top area and area data.page bottom area tags. These area template tags are provided by the at apostrophe CMS slash area core module and take a context. In this case, data.page and an area schema field name. This helper will parse through all the widget data added to our area and render that data into HTML without us having to parse each widget. Pages, pieces, and widget templates each get data from the field schema of the corresponding document provided to them through the data object. For pages, this is through data.page. This provides an object with the names and values of each schema field as properties. For pages, this also provides a wealth of additional information about the document, including the time the document was created or updated, the document ID for accessing it in the database, and the publication status. Depending on the document type of the module, the template has a lot of additional data available through the data object. We will be using one of the data properties in the fragments section, but you can see the larger list of them in the documentation. When creating a new template, sometimes it is handy to see exactly what is being passed to the template for debugging purposes. Apostrophe exposes several helpers, including apos.log. In this case, you could use it to output the data.page object to the console using the following tag. This is essentially like using a console log in JavaScript. This information will show up in the server console, not the browser console, since the page is rendered server side. An alternative to this is using a script tag surrounding a console log. This will pipe the log output to the browser console since the script will be run on the client side. This is useful for parsing through large objects or using other console methods. Note the use of pipe JSON within the interpreted expression. This is saying that the page.data should be piped to the nunchucks JSON filter. Filters and nunchucks apply a function to any template data and are used to sanitize or modify the input that is piped to them. In this case, the JSON filter will properly escape data into a JSON string for output in a script tag. There are several nunchucks and apostrophe supplied filters Plus, you can create custom filters. We will explore this further in a future tutorial. In this tutorial, we've navigated through the process of adding a page in an apostrophe project. 
This was achieved by modifying the existing apostrophe CMS homepage module, but in future tutorials, we will add pages through the creation of a new module and incorporation of that fresh page type into the apostrophe CMS page module. We also took an initial look at how to add and organize content schema fields. This is crucial because it is how you will allow users to enter content onto your pages. We primarily concentrated on the area schema field and core apostrophe widgets when creating our two content areas. Moving forward, we will look at other schema field types, as well as conditionals and other options that regulate the content users can add to the page. While creating the main page layout template for our project, we also got an overview of template inheritance by looking at the core base layout file. Now that we have the core of our homepage complete, in the next video, we will dive into the creation of fragments. We will be using fragments to add headers and footers that we can reuse for all of the pages in our project, including the home page. We will also have a first look at how to use localization to translate the content of our fragments to other languages. If you have any questions about this tutorial or want more help starting your apostrophe CMS project, please join our vibrant community in Discord. You can join right now by following the link in the comments. We hope that you will continue along with our tutorial series and subscribe to the other great videos in our channel.